Hello, I'm Jimmy from Nose Hat Games. Welcome to my humble basement slash bedroom slash office. So typically for Logic World Wednesdays, I tell you about how development on the game is going with a blog post uh, using my written word. But today we're doing something a little bit different. I will be telling you how the development is going with a vlog post and my spoken word. Um, you see, friends, I have screwed up. I, uh, I got kind of lazy with my wrist stretching routine, and I stopped stretching my wrists, and so I got a repetitive strain injury, and now my wrists hurt when I type or use the mouse, so I'm not doing that for a couple days while I heal. But in the meantime, let's talk about Logic World on a vlog instead of a blog. How novel. So, um... Oh yeah, that's the other thing. I'm not editing this video at all, because that would require using a mouse and keyboard, which I'm not doing. So there might be some awkward pauses, there might be some false starts, but you are just gonna have to deal with it. Anyways, let's talk about Logic World. So, um, as I've been talking about on the blog and demoing on a couple YouTube videos here on the Mouse Hat Games YouTube channel, for the last month and a half or so, I have been working on refactoring the game's rendering system to use a fancy technique called GPU instancing rather than the old combined meshes system. And as of this week, I'm finally at feature parity. So what that means is that everything in the game works. Like everything looks identical to how it used to. All of the features like function and, and don't behave unexpectedly. But now they use GPU instancing to draw the 3D geometry instead of combined meshes. Um, and holy hell, that was a lot of work. There's kind of a lot of features in Logic World, and converting them all to the new format was, was no small undertaking. I have found, to my great delight, and also, to be honest, to my great relief, my immense relief, that um, the GPU instancing is actually faster than the old method. Not just in theory, not just in abstracted scenarios, but in real world scenarios, in actual logic world worlds. It is significantly faster. And thank god, I was so worried that I, I'd finish this whole thing and find that the GPU instancing is only actually better in a few very specific scenarios that don't actually come up much in the game. And all that time would have been wasted, but, but thankfully not. It actually is faster. Um, it's like, on, on smaller worlds, like 100,000 components or so, it's it's moderately faster, like you go from 100 FPS to 130 FPS. Um, and then on large worlds, where you're in like the millions of components, it's, um, it's like really significantly faster. You go from like 2 FPS to 60 FPS. Uh, so, so that's wonderful. Um, there, there's one caveat, one area in which it is not actually faster, and that is post-processing. If you turn on ambient occlusion or anti-aliasing, uh, which um, uh, anti-aliasing uses MSAA in Logic World, uh, then it is like somewhat slower for the smaller worlds. And I'm pretty sure this is just because my custom instancing shader with the custom depth uh, pass, that my custom depth pass is not quite as efficient as Unity's built-in depth pass. Um, so I, I just need to like like dig into that shader code and um, uh, and and uh, and optimize it and make it more fast. And and that shouldn't be too much work. I hope we'll see. Um, e even if it doesn't work, it's not that big a deal. It's like like for the for a hundred thousand component world, you go from like a hundred FPS to ninety FPS. Um, so it's not that much of a price to pay, uh, but but I, w I would like to fix that up. Um, aside from that, though, if you have post-processing off, then when you're standing still, uh, everything's working beautifully. The game is so fast. The issue comes in when you start to move around. Um, if you have limited render distance, as, um, as stuff disappears behind you, as you get farther away from it, and then it appears in front of you, you get some lag spikes right now. Um, so... I mean, I know why that is, and I know how to fix it. It's just I'm not uploading data to the GPU as efficiently as I could be. Um, so I'll, I'll fix that. That won't be a big deal. Uh, what is kind of a big deal is the colliders. So as I've talked about, one of the ways that I've tried to optimize the game is by making colliders only exist in a bubble around the player. So um, anything that's like too far away for you to reach won't actually have colliders active. Excuse me, not editing this video. And 
that works great when you're standing still. Uh, but when you're moving around and colliders disappear behind you and then appear in front of you, that unfortunately is a lot slower than I thought it was going to be, and it's causing some lag spikes. Uh, there's just there's a lot of overhead with moving around Unity objects and specifically with moving around Unity colliders, and I, I don't think there's a way to get around it. Um, so what I'm probably going to do as a solution is I'm going to make it so that when you load into the world, um, the colliders exist only in a little bubble around you, uh, so that we, we keep those fast world loading times by not instantiating a million colliders uh, as, as you load the game. But then as you're playing, gradually, just like just a, like 10 colliders every frame, gradually um, the rest of the world will gain its colliders. And that should, uh, should be like completely unnoticeable to the player. Like, you shouldn't even know that it's happening, but it would still um, get us those fast loading times. It would increase RAM usage, but, ah, uh, fuck it. People have lots of RAM. You guys can deal with it. Um, another solution I might look into is switching from the old, uh, the, the built-in Unity physics system to the new um, data-oriented physics system, which theoretically would be much faster uh, in terms of moving colliders around and in terms of instantiating colliders, and in terms of having a lot of colliders in the world. Um, but it would require a significant refactoring of like everything in the game. And also, it's not officially production ready. Like They recommend that you don't use it until it's a bit more stable, so might not do that yet. Anyways, I, I'm rambling a little bit, but the point is, with my, my grand effort to significantly improve performance in Logic World for update 0 0.91, it's like, the, the end is in sight. We're almost there. I've got a few more kinks to work out and solve. Uh, but, but like, the hardest parts are behind me, and it is actually faster in practice, not just in theory. <sighs> Thank God. Um, so yeah, I'm going to finish that up. Hopefully, that'll all be done in like a week. Um, then I'm gonna go on around a bug fixing and just like fix as many bugs as I, I can in the game I thank you for all your bug reports. Um, I'm gonna deal with them as soon as I've got this this refactoring done and uh, Then I'm gonna add a couple new features man I love adding new features and I miss doing it Optimization is so unsatisfying nothing changes. It just gets faster. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think that's about everything I wanted to talk about. How long have I been recording for? Eight minutes. If you have watched all eight minutes of this, well, uh, hats off for you. I hope it was enjoyable and informative. Uh, thanks for your interest in Logic World. I'll see you next week, hopefully with, uh, you know, words in a blog. I hope, yeah, my, my, my wrist should be healed by then. Uh, I'm, I'm being really gentle on them. Peace and love. See you later.